Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Everybody's been so hospitable and friendly, and thank you so much for having me. This is exciting for me because I never in a million years thought that I would be a Christian. I would have never. I used to argue with Christians. I was just telling this sister. I used to literally be like, oh, no, they're going to come and convert me, these people. You know, I come from a background where it is looked down upon. I, I literally thought somehow that, you know, this Jesus stuff, that's just for white people. That's just a white people. I, I had no clue of the power of the living God. And I searched and searched everywhere. I had delved into Buddhism. I had delved into uh, Jainism. Uh, I, w I was born in India and I came here. My parents are Hindu, so I had a lot of Hindu influence and, and background. And so I, had, I was studying deep into the Upanishads and the Gita, and I wasn't taking it lightly. I mean, I had been searching my whole life for something deeper than this, what we see, just this world. So I was looking and looking hard in all the wrong places, which, praise God, I find out now. But um, that brings me to, 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 the, to the yoga part, which has everything to do with my spiritual journey because it wasn't a journey of just exercise and fitness, it was a spiritual journey. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about yoga, the way that it's advertised as something that's just good for your body and, and nothing more than that and it's harmless and it's innocent and just, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You see it everywhere. But that's, that's the deception. This, this yoga is so much deeper then people realize, now I know there's different types of people here today, different backgrounds. Maybe someone's thinking, well, when, you know, I go to yoga class, I do the stretches and everything because it feels good and I like the exercise part of it. But when they start doing the chants and stuff, I just say, oh, Jesus, Jesus, and that's it, you know? And that's the way I go about doing it. Or maybe, you know, you're one of those that do Christian yoga, so-called Christian yoga, where they're doing yoga postures and then doing scripture and Bible verses. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. But whatever the case may be, uh, we'll be looking at what it really is, and I'll be getting into that more later on, about um, our perception. Coming to yoga as a Christian, what does that really mean and entail? And so, before anything, I just want to start with my, my journey, what I've come through. So, basically, I grew up here in the United States, as I said, I was looking for all of these, these uh, spiritual things. I was doing meditation. I was doing all the breathing exercises. I was doing everything. And I was so excited when I found out about this uh, organization with this guru. And uh, it was called Isha Yoga. And I was so excited because I wanted to get enlightenment in this lifetime. And I was so about it because I said, no, I, I can't wait a second further. I want to spiritually progress. And I was so dedicated to wanting to, to grow spiritually, that I got involved in this at such a deep level, basically 15 hours of what would be considered yoga a day. And that was what other people were doing as well. And, and yoga means different things. It's not just 15 hours I was standing on my head or doing something, you know, some posture. But it entails, you know, working towards the organization and doing things. And, and if you're serving people, and that's one type of yoga. And if you're just sitting there doing some meditation, that's one type of yoga. But it was a constant thing. That's what people don't realize. A lot of people don't realize is that yoga is not just the, the physical. Uh, which is known as the Hatha Yoga, the physical aspect. So all of these different types of things I was doing was yoga, and I loved it. Let me tell you, I got such a euphoric feeling from what I was doing. And I'm telling you that that euphoric feeling is so real. It is a supernatural thing that happens when you involve yourselves in these practices. But where is it coming from is the, is the thing. Because we know that the devil is a liar and he's deceptive and he comes still killing and destroying. And this is exactly what was happening is I was being deceived. I was being deceived into thinking that the, the euphoric effects that I was experiencing was because of a spiritual advancement, that I'm going somewhere, that my soul is, is connecting with the universe and I'm really getting somewhere. And the truth was that I was being deceived by Satan. 
And so, you know, there's different levels of this. This is really dangerous stuff. I mean, you could have never told me. You know, the whole motto of, of life these days is just go with what feels good. You know, if it's good for you, if it works for you, just go with it, you know? And that's what I was thinking. Well, who are you to tell me that something is not good? You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I'm feeling. I'm feeling good, so forget you. You know, that was my whole, that was my whole thing is don't tell me what to do. I'm doing, I feel good. And that's the thing is, is when I talk to people that are still in it, the same thing keeps coming up. Well, I feel so good. I feel so good. And it's so good. It's addictive. Just like a drug, right? Because it does, a drug isn't good for you, but a drug gets you addicted. And so I was addicted to these practices like a drug to be able to sustain that euphoria and think that I'm really going somewhere. You see how he set it up, the devil? It's really, really intensely deceptive. So as I'm feeling better and better and better, I'm going through more and more classes, getting deeper involved, deeper. I had decided to actually uh, go to the classes in, in India, live in India, give up my whole life here and just give everything up for this and, and full-fledged for the rest of my life. I was that devoted into this because it just felt so right at the time. And I'm talking about, when I say euphoric experiences, it's not just kind of a, a lightheaded, oh, that's nice, buzz. Uh, when, once you get into it real deep, real deep, there's different types of manifestations that take place. Like um, laughter, I would, I would just start laughing when I'm starting to do the things. And this is at the intense levels, okay? I would just start, or, or shaking, okay? Or I would feel different sensations, all kinds of sensations. Or I would just start, um, you know, running around. There's different programs that, that they would do. And I would just start running around. I'd just get this energy. I didn't know where it came from. And I just had to let it out. Or you'll start dancing or, uh, you know, all kinds of manifestations that I thought, this is great. I'm really connecting. And I, I mean, now looking at it, it seems like, whoa, that should have been a red flag. But <laughs> so many people are so deeply involved that when, that it, it would never occur to you that this is anything but good uh, at the time. So I was having all these types of manifestations, thought it means that I'm, I'm progressing and I'm going forward, and the truth was, um, was, was completely, completely different. And I ended up in India getting sicker physically, and I thought, you know, when we get sick, we were told, you know, that this means that it's just, you, you're just not doing something right, or your karma is coming out, and you're just, you need to just clean it out, and you need to just go with it and go through it to be able to, to get better. And so all these things, it didn't make sense, but I kept doing more and more, kept getting worse and worse. Well, I ended up getting so sick that... Um, like deathly ill, basically, very, very sick, okay? And, but I still held on and clung to the yoga as, as the solution, even being deathly ill for the, for the longest time. And, um, you know, I didn't realize that the altered state of consciousness that I was allowing to take place through the different things that I was doing, whether it be the breathing techniques and the chantings and the invocations and the the uh, postures, all of those things work together. The deception that, that we see now is that you can just separate one from all the rest and that it's just purely physical, but they all go together. They were in, designed from the inception to go together. It's been made for that purpose. In fact, yoga means yoke. That's what it means. Now, who are we yoking to? Right? Because this is, if it means yoke and you're yoking, you're literally, what you're yoking to are Hindu gods, which are demonic. So what I now realize happened was that those manifestations, those symptoms that I was experiencing were actually because I was allowing demonic forces to overtake my body through this practice that I was doing. Now, if we understand this, how deep this gets, then we, when we look at going to yoga for just purely harmless physical exercise, we better think twice because we better understand where we are getting our entertainment from or our um, exercise from. What is the source of this? The source of yoga has been Hinduism. You cannot separate the two. 
I just want to explain that, that invocations and chantings are a very important part of, of yoga, of Hinduism. You may see in some cl classes people say Om and they do the, the whole thing and they chant different things. Well, let's just understand what that is. What is an invocation? Literally from the Wikipedia source right here, it says, invocation is defined as the following in Wikipedia. An invocation from the Latin verb Inno, invocar, to call on, invoke, to give, Many, may take the form of supplication, prayer, or spell, a form of possession, command or conjura, conjuration, self-identification with certain spirits. The word possession is used here in its neutral form to mean a state potentially psychological in which an individual's normal personality is replaced by another. This is also sometimes known as aspecting. Possessive invocation may be attempted singly or is often, like, okay, goes on, it says allowing themselves to become a vessel for the spirit or deity. The person successfully invoked may be moved to speak or act in non-characteristic ways, acting as the deity or spirit and may lose all or some self-awareness while doing so. This is no small thing. That's straight talking about demonic possession. And that's exactly what was happening to me. But of course, the devil doesn't come out with his two horns saying, hey, I got gotcha. you. You know, he is absolutely coming as an angel of light. And we'll look into those scriptures in, in, in more details later. But so we see what what is what we're invoking here, these chants are for a reason. They're used for a very specific purpose, along with the physical aspect, the postures and the stretches, along with the breathing, okay? You're doing all of these things in conjunction for what? To open yourself up to a demonic realm, okay? So that's what it does, and I'm so glad that, that I ended up getting sick, praise God, because I got to see the truth of the end of it, it's going to come sooner or later. The euphoria is not going to last forever, you know? And it all came tumbling, crashing down. And it was the biggest blessing of my life, actually, when I got to see what the truth of this is. But at first, I didn't see it. At first, I tried to cling on to anything else but the living God. And as I came back from the United States, I mean, came back to the United States from India, lost sick I mean I was so sick with with a condition that many doctors could not understand what it is with all kinds of fungal bacterial uh, parasitical issues digestive issues where I would eat food and and this before I explain the symptoms this the the manifestations the physical manifestations take uh, different forms for different people. So this was mine is digestively I could hardly eat. I would eat and just be in pain. I'd be rolling on the floor in pain and nothing could help me. I could only eat certain foods. So there's there was nerve issues where I would twitch. I couldn't breathe. There was uh, I thought I was dying. I was in that moment dying. I went to the emergency room. They just couldn't understand what was going on. I couldn't breathe. I mean it was horror. I was twitching so hard with seizures during the night I could barely sleep that I actually ended up hurting myself through the, the, the seizures. And uh, skin manifestations and um, lesions and sores and, and itching and, and crawling things and, and uh, more attraction towards bugs. It's like, you know how some people get uh, like mosquitoes, they, they bite them more, some people more than others. It's like that, but with all kinds of bugs, just like I'm attracting bugs, like I'm a bug magnet. Just crazy, weird stuff, weird stuff. Along with all the, the physical stuff was making me to the point of absolute desperation, where I tried everything. I spent all my life savings trying to, to get physical help, like what treatments I could find, anything. Um, doctors didn't understand, so they just thought, okay, she must be mental. She just needs to be put in a mental ward. You know, <laughs> they, they didn't understand what was going on. It was so much deeper. And um, until there were some doctors did some blood work and, and took some samples, and they found out that there is something going on, but they called it mystery, mysterious. They didn't know. And so they, they did say that there's definitely, um, you know, weakness in the body. So that all these things. And, and while this is happening, I'm waking up in the middle of the night 
uh, choking myself. That's never happened before, literally choking myself. And I'm thinking, okay, that's strange. I've never done that before. And I would, I would uh, be getting suicidal thoughts. I, I, I would be visualizing a dragon with wings. And I didn't know what any of this meant, just, just all kinds of, of weird stuff. And then something happened that really changed my perspective. When in front of my mother, who is not a believer, you know, she's Hindu as well, uh, she, I said in front of her, I said, in a voice that wasn't even mine, I said, I'm going to take you all down with me. In a, in a fit of anger, I said that out loud. And after I said that, I just sat there for about five minutes in total shock because I couldn't believe that what was happening. We were taught that there was no, in yoga, that there's no real good or evil. Of course, no, no. There's no evil. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. You know, everything is just a consequence. You just have consequence to actions. So for me to think that this is possession or there's something demonic, I didn't even believe in demons. You know, um, it was out of the question. So, but this happened, and I knew that that I had to change my thinking quick because this is something outside of my box. So I started looking deeper. I was like, Mom, I, t I said, that wasn't even me. And she said, yeah, it didn't sound like you. You know, I was, I was so angry all the time. I was so angry with my situation, too, that I just, I was just filled with anger and just kept getting worse, and, and my health kept deteriorating. I mean, I was in such bad health condition that I was forced to, to be bald. Um, my, my condition was really, I was very thin, uh, didn't talk to anybody didn't have my, any friends, my spiritual community, my great spiritual community, where were they when I needed them? They were not there to be seen because I wasn't helping build the establishment. And so uh, I was basically, uh, I felt very, very alone. And I didn't know any real Christian people, really Holy Spirit filled on me. I'm talking about born again, believing Christian. There were some people that professed some things, but they were also new age, and I didn't know anybody, nobody to really guide me in, in truth, uh, in, in person, that is. And so I was alone in my room, living with my parents, forced to live with my parents, because I couldn't even live alone in the apartment that I, I was. I was actually um, just forced to, to just deal with it by, in, in a vulnerable position, right? Like I'm forced, I'm living with my parents, I'm sick, I'm dying, these weird things are happening, nobody can help me, they think I'm crazy, they want to lock me up, I'm alone, there's nowhere to turn, I might as well commit suicide, is what I concluded. And I wasn't kidding, it wasn't for attention, I was serious. And I, I devised a plan to go to the railroad tracks uh, near where my parents lived, and I said, if nothing gets better, I'm going to go to the railroad tracks, and I'm going to just end it. I'm going to find out the timings, and it'll be quick, and I was, like, excited about it, because I was like, yes, I finally thought of something. I had hope that that would actually relieve my pain, and for that actually gave me relief, and I would sit in front of the fireplace, I remember, and, and just imagine in the middle of the night, I would sit in front of the fireplace and just imagine my body burning up and I would get so much relief from it because that, I thought I won't be in this earth any longer and oh, the pain will be gone and I won't have to deal with any of this. That's, that's, that's how low I was. And we know that a broken and contrite spirit, he does not despise. All my pride had to be gone. I could not hold myself up to any of the, the ideas that I had before, any of my own ways, my own thoughts, my own understanding of life crumbled. And that was a great and beautiful thing because he lifted me up. God is, is amazing when we are really humbled. It's our pride that, that keeps us away. I was so prideful. And even with nobody to really witness to me, um, you know, the way that he, he led me, into truth. So here I am, you know, suicide, all of these things, and I thought, let me just try one last attempt to see if anything can help me on the internet, you know, because that was my only way of really finding anything out, my, my uh, communication with, with the world. And so I was looking on the internet, 
And I kept coming across the Bible and it was annoying me. It's like, why out of all the things, the thing that I don't want these man-made traditions, I don't want these things. Oh, I'm so sick of, why does it keep on coming up, you know? But at that point, I was like, so desperate that a lot of that went and I was like, okay, well what? Keeps coming up, Bible verses keep coming up. And what, for me personally, what kept on coming up was the Lord showing me that the times that we are in are, are prophetic, that they're not just normal times. I mean, can, you can look everywhere. The wickedness is rising. There's prophetic signs everywhere. And so I was like, okay. And he, you know, showing me stuff about Revelation 13, 16, and 17, and Mark of the Beast, all kinds of stuff he was showing me. And I thought, well, okay, that part of the Bible is true. But the Jesus part that people talk about, that can't be true. You know, maybe parts of the Bible are true. That's my conclusion at that time. But I said, well, let me do an experiment to find out the truth before I actually commit suicide. And I said, okay, I got on my knees humbly and I, I just said, okay, this is before I uh, actually got saved and Holy Spirit filled. But I just said, okay, if this is true, I was just kind of, communicating and, and I, if you're real and what people say about you is real there's really a man that came to earth and died for my sins I mean that just sounds like a fairy tale to me God but if this is all real and I'm not going completely crazy you died for my sins as people say and all this I'm calling on you now I'm calling I said then help me show me you know I'm, and I just said I just basically burst out the name I said Jesus Christ like that and the moment that I did that my body started shaking because the demons in me trembled, the word is true, and it says that the demons tremble at the name of the Lord. And that's exactly what happened. And that, that started like, really was a, uh, freaking me out, but I was surprised that it actually had a reaction. I was not expecting it, I was like, yeah, well, you know. And it really actually started, and that built my faith. I started having, I said, okay, there's something to this. I didn't know much, but I, I, did, I wasn't completely submitted. I was just kind of testing out, you know, but the Lord was showing me that there's, this is, there's power in the name for sure. And, and he was showing me things. And so I said, okay, I got to get a Bible. And I, I my, this time my parents are thinking, I'm really lost my mind, you know? Oh, here, now she wants to get a Bible. Now she's trying to do the Christian thing, you know? She's just one of many things that, uh, she's just trying out, let her do her thing, whatever, you know? But, um, I did end up getting the word and as, as reading that, you know, it started building my faith and just what the Lord was showing me with, with different things. And I just said, I remember, I didn't realize how significant it would be for me to really give my life to Christ, like how the eternal consequences would be and, and how it would be for this life. How, pro in fact, I don't even remember the date because I, I didn't think like here I'm doing something big, but I just remember that uh, you know, people kept saying all over where I was looking and in the Bible and everywhere on the internet, people kept saying, you know, you got to give your life to Christ. You got to completely submit. You got to ask for forgiveness of your sin. You got to ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. You got to make that initiative. You got to want it. You got to be sincere. And you got to just, it's, it's a thing of the heart. And I just kept hearing it. And you know, that seed was getting planted in different places. And I heard it enough that I was like, I'm going to do this. I got to do this right now. And so I ran upstairs and I completely um, remember, I just said, okay, here it is, have it all. Here it is, have it all. And I just gave it all up. And I asked for forgiveness of my sin. I asked him to be my Lord and Savior. I said, I'm gonna follow you now. Now I'm convinced I, I'm gonna follow you now. This is it, like here, here's my life. And that moment, I didn't realize how huge what I did was, but from that moment, my life changed. The anger that I had was d just not there. Even my parents noticed it, that my dad's like, it's really weird. She doesn't get mad about anything, you know? <laughs> and it was, it was straight. I was this different person. I was just calm. I mean, they would literally, sometimes there'd be people just yelling, manifesting different things in my face. And I'd just be like, I love you. And then I'd go and pray for them in my room. And they're like, what the heck happened to our daughter? But you know, the thing is that it was a totally new transformation. I became completely new and transformed, and that, and it, which is totally different than before. Even when I had the the false peace, and I seemed loving and peaceful towards all and everything, totally different, which we'll get into later. But so this happened, this transformation, and 
things started changing. My healing started, physical healing started. Um, everything, the way that I looked at everything changed. Uh, I didn't have the anxiety. I mean, my parents were so like, no, you have to have anxiety meds, like you're, you're really out of control. And they said, here's three times a day, anxiety meds. And I didn't need a single thing. I didn't need nothing. I had the Holy Spirit living in me. And it was amazing. Then I started, um, you know, my healing was not an instant healing. The Lord can do that as well, and He does, and He has, for sure. But mine was a gradual healing, and I praise God for that because I learned a lot. It helped me to, to grow and, and to keep me in a, in a place where I can, I can grow. But I did start healing, and I started just focusing on, on how I can, you know, share this with others. I don't want anyone to be deceived. And I was so thinking that everyone's just going to be like, oh, wow, you just showed me. Now I'm, I'm understanding. I'm coming to Christ, you know. And so I had that naive uh, thing about me. And I went out, and, and then I felt so much rejection. I felt like, why aren't people really taking what I'm, I'm, I'm serious? Like, God, it's real. <laughs> you know, like, the Bible's true, and people are not getting it. And so it was a little bit, um, you know, of a, of a challenge, but I kept going, kept going, kept sharing, and I, I shared my testimony, and I started making YouTube videos, and that was my way to really um, communicate and, and, and share with others, and so I started sharing, you know, whatever I would feel led to share in, in the Bible, I made videos, I was just sharing all these things, and the YouTube video is called From Occult Yoga to um, Jesus Christ, and it ended up going viral, and I never thought in a million years, I just made it like on a just quick, oh, I got to share this, and then people started asking me questions and coming to me, and I ended up starting to, to pray with them and help and minister to them, and, and they would be telling me different things about their experiences with yoga and what they've come out of, and, and how they, the, the Lord, you know, has literally used that, that video, that five minute little video where I, I, you know, didn't ever think it would become this, use that video to show them and lead them out of yoga and how their life has changed and they've come to Christ and all of these things. Um, and I was just in awe and amazed and I would continue to be able to, you know, pray with people and, um, you know, just minister and it's been going on since then. And so countless people I ha have uh, encountered that we talk about these things and it just reaffirms, I'm like, yep, I know what you're going through. I've been there. I know, I know the Lord's the only way. And, and people are, are seeing that because the deception is so great. And so many people come to me saying, I am a Christian and I have been doing yoga and some the Holy Spirit has been convicting me about this. You, you don't know how much I hear that. And then they, they end up saying, because they're really seeking. And they're like, Lord, is this really what you want? Because once you know, you're held to an accountability. I mean, you, you, once you know what this really is, you have a choice to make. Do you want anything to do with that? I mean, can we really make excuses that it's just physical exercise when we know how deep it really is? Do we want to be partakers of anything that has to do with demonic oppression in the demonic realm? Right? And so the Holy Spirit convicts people when we're really seeking and saying, what do you want me to do, Lord? And and has been leading countless people out of that deception. And so, praise God for that. They have been, um, you know, seeing the, the truth about this thing. And then there's, there's you know, there, there's those that want to justify and try to, you know, skirt around it. And we'll talk about that later. And so, this is why I'm, I'm really hoping that, and I, I pray that these words that I'm speaking, you see that this is, this is the truth of what this is, that it can go deep inside of you, that it, it, it hits and lands on good ground, that you can see and understand that, no, this, this is not something that I want anything to do. Not only that, but to speak out against this in, in love, because a lot of people don't know. And so it's, it's, it's something that has taken everybody by the storm, yoga everywhere, yoga everywhere. And so, um, you know, and when, 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 you know, the devil doesn't give up in trying to, to do his tactics and snares, it's in, you know, until, until his uh, time is up. Hallelujah, his time will be up one day. <laughs> uh, but until that day, you know, there's going to be all kinds of deceptions, tactics, and snares that are just laying wait. And, and we can't just underestimate 
the, the, the true tactics of the devil and just write it off as, as nothing. I mean, there's a reason that the world exalts it so much, right? We're not supposed to be partakers of, of the world, and this is something that the world is exalting. And the, the devil really is always working. Just, just an example, after I got saved, I mean, I had... Immediately, I had this uh, uh, indigenous medicine doctor, a, a witch doctor type of person that came, and I didn't even know certain things, and I was just thinking, well, we do everything in the name of Jesus, and then that's, then we'll be fine, and I thought, okay, yeah, you could, I had no clue, I was just so fresh in this. She ended up coming to my house, staying, saying that she's going to help me completely heal, doing all these things, and she started calling on uh, different spirits and saying she was talking to my grandmothers and doing all this stuff. And immediately I was like, no, something's wrong. You know, as I was seeking the Lord, he was showing me that this is, this is really wrong. That very same week that that lady came, there was a, uh, a false prophet guy that said, oh, come and follow me. And he would talk about the Bible. He would talk about things that seemed, you know, like he knew what he was talking about. But he said, no, you need to come follow me. And only then you're going to be singing to the world because he knew I'm, I sing. And so he's like, oh, you're going to be singing to the nations and you're going to be healed and you have to follow me, follow me. And you have to come to where my church is, which was eight hours away. And, and the Lord, and he did some weird stuff on me. And I knew the Lord showed me in a mighty way after prayer that, that that man was false and not to follow him show me clearly the Bible says this he's teaching this that's bad you know but the, the point being I've been through so much so many different um, experiences I knew that wow the same week I get shortly after getting saved and then all these things this man comes to my house this witch lady comes to my house they're just trying to do something to get me off track and the only thing that I was able to, the, the way that I was able to discern to get through that, it's like there's landmines everywhere. How do I get through this? You know, the only way is through that complete submission to God and asking for, for guidance because he will guide those. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so we don't have to be afraid of, oh, everywhere we go, the devil's going to do this, the devil's going to do that, the devil's going to, no, no. We don't have to be afraid if we're really following God and we really know that we are willing to sacrifice the things that sometimes, you know, we like in our flesh for God. If we're willing to sacrifice, that's what he, he expects us to do. Sometimes we do the things we don't like to do. It's not exactly fun when everybody thinks you're crazy because of your faith. It's not exactly fun because, you know, you, you speak out against something that's so common and everyone thinks like you're just in the old old age ways of thinking you know and you you know it's not exactly fun but it's exactly what we need to do because we're called to do that because we're strangers in this world we're pilgrims we're not supposed to be partakers of this world you know and so these are things that we have to to be aware of and now that we know hallelujah because then we can actually share the truth and the truth will set us free the truth is going to be whether you know landing on good ground According to the Lord's will, we just pray for people. If we share something that doesn't land on good ground, that's okay. We keep on praying for them. And I've seen time and time again with people, I mean, people that have even come to me and said, and, and been really mean at first when they're, when they're talking to me and saying, you are just so blah, 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 full of it, blah, blah, blah. And they go off. And later on, and I pray for them in my heart in love. I don't want to get roped up in what they're trying to, you know, rope me into their anger battle. And I just, I really, in love, I'm like, Lord, help them and, and show them. And I just pray for them. And I've seen people, and I show them things about the, the real, uh, where the, the yoga really is from. Give them information. And, and um, ask them to really pray about it. I said, there's nothing to lose if, if you're right, you know, about yoga, if yoga's fine or anything, then what is, the, they're lost in really praying about it. There's nothing lost in that. And many people have said, you know, I'm sorry, I really see it now. Um, you know, I, I've seen countless people just turnarounds, um, people that have been involved in, in the deepest things, you know, uh, and in, rear, in the same exact symptoms keep coming up, lots of same thing with the kundalini and all of that. Um, I want to get into the, okay, so I have some time here. There's, there's this quote that I have in the document that I wrote called Isha Yoga Roots. Okay, it's, um, it's online, it's on the website, it's called Isha Yoga Roots. Actually, it's at um, martismanistry.org slash download slash isha-yoga-roots.pdf. If, 
if you happen to have a great memory. But anyway, <laughs> um, that basically I broke down everything. The Lord led me to write that. That's a whole other talk in itself. The Lord led me to write. I didn't even want to write this because I'm like, I'm done with that stuff. Why do I have to even, I won't even think about it. I want nothing to do with that. But even giving me dreams and saying no and, and showing me like, this, this might bless you to know what the, the dream was actually. The guru guy that I was following in my dream was sitting there and, and the people following him were all gathered together just like I used to be. And in my dream I walked in there and the Lord showed me that the, the, the guru guy tried to put some spell on me and keep me from sharing but that there's nothing that he could do. He became frozen. He became frozen and he could not touch me, he could not do a thing and I went and told those people you, you, this is false, this is fake. They mocked me in the dream even then and everything but, but I was I was totally protected. When we're doing God's will, you know, that's the thing, it's so awesome. And so, you know, I understand that uh, a lot of people that come out of different, um, like when they're deep in Hinduism and stuff, they get scared of, um, you know, talking about it or going back to it or anything. But the Lord really showed me that the, His protection is like nothing that I've ever had in my life. And so He is there to help and, and guide and lead. Um, there's a, from this document that I wrote, he led me to write that, uh, I quote this, I quote this ex-guru and former yogi Rabindranath Maharaj, and, he, and this is exactly true. He says, there is no, he correctly states, he says, Brahma is the Hindu concept of God. There is no yoga that is purely physical. And there is no Hinduism without yoga, and no yoga without Hinduism. And if we really understand that, that that's a true statement, I think it will really give us a perspective about if we want to be involving ourselves in that, you know, um, what, if we really want to be yoking with that. So that, that's an important thing. Now, if we're just looking at this, people might not know what is kundalini, what is yoga, what do these words mean? Okay, so yoga we talked about, right? Yoga means yoking with. And, and who are you really yoking with? We look at Kundalini. We can get a real idea of, of where this comes from. Okay, Kundalini is defined literally. I'm not saying this. It's defined literally as the serpent force. The serpent. The serpent. The serpent comes up. The snake. We know who that is, right? So it says that it, you know, it's a serpent force that lies dor dormant in the base of the spine that just gets awakened and we all just need to, we just all just need the serpent force to, to be better. You know, we just need the serpent to awaken us, right? This is sounding familiar, right? Just uh, the Hindu statement that's really um, reiterated in this quote by my former guru, the one that I was following, he said this about Kundalini. He said, Kundalini is the plug point. Once you are plugged in, you can make the light happen. You are plugged into an endless source of power. That is Kundalini. Yoga is just the science of getting the plug properly in. If you look at it on one level, Kundalini is just another name for the source of creation. This is the Hindu sentiment. We understand a few things here. It's, it's uh, touted as a science just purely a science. And that is a deception to be able to draw in people of different crowds, uh, you know. Oh, if, if they say, oh here, welcome to a Hindu God worship, a lot of people will not go for that. But it's a science, it's good for you, all the health benefits, right? And so that's the, again, you see that deception of science there. And so obviously we know that, you know, the serpent force did not create us, right? This is a lie from the, from the pit of hell. And so Second Corinthians, 11, 14 through 15, as I said earlier, no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Deception. We are so clearly warned there's deception. So what we think is necessarily right and good or what the world considers is right and good is not always the case. You know, we see that these demons are fooling countless people into thinking that, you know, yoga is okay and that you're going to just, or, or non-Christians that you're going to get enlightened and it's not a big deal, or that it's just stretching, it's just exercise. And so, 
If you look at really what Hinduism is, it's a personal works-based system of salvation. It's based upon one's works. And, uh, you know, essentially that, that you, can, you can become as a god through your works, what you do, right? And so if we look at what we really have here, we have a kundalini, which is a serpent force, right? That helps us yoke with Hindu gods, Right? This is the serpent. And thereby, in doing that, we're disobeying the one true God and through the, the practice, uh, a pagan practice of yoga, right? With the ultimate goal of becoming like our own God. That's what it comes down to. This is sounding really, really way too familiar. Because the Bible describes, you know, the serpent luring people to disobey God with a lie that we can become our own gods. Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more subtle, which means in the Hebrew 6.175, cunning, than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And in 3, 4, and 5 it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall surely... You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And, and I know that many of you already know this, but just to reiterate, we know the serpent is the devil. It says that in Revelation 12, 9, right? The old serpent called the devil Satan that deceiveth the whole world. That's what it, it, it's telling us, that he deceives the whole world. He has all these tactics and snares set up. And he is a liar. This old, the old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, in Revelation 20, verse 2. So what you're really saying is, when you're doing yoga, is it's like the devil is saying, here, let my serpent force you know, guide you and you'll feel good for your body and your mind and, and your soul. It's my serpent force that you need. Is that something that we really want anything to do with? even if the physical part feels good. You know, it's, it's that euphoria that we were talking about. It's, it's not worth it. The, is it worth our soul? Is it worth really disobeying God if, if we know that God wouldn't want any part of this? It's like, you know, as I said, it's like drugs. It is, it is a type of drug. Are you willing to sacrifice a good feeling because because you know that that's not something that you know, the Lord wants us to do. If we say, okay, there may be somebody here saying, well, I'm not going to do the spiritual stuff. You know, I don't do the chanting and stuff. I just like the exercise part of yoga. So I don't see that it's a big deal. And this is really basically like saying, if, if you have a, a, let's say your favorite color is red. And you just love red. It's your favorite color, right? And you just, you just see this, this shirt. And uh, it's a red shirt, and it has satanic symbols all over it, like let's say a pentagram with a circle and all kinds of different upside down cross, whatever, all the different satanic symbols, and you decide to buy that shirt and wear that shirt because it's red, and you like the red color. Now, if you think that you wouldn't do that, and no way would I be doing that, I'm Christian, I represent, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna wear satanic symbols on my, if you think that you wouldn't do that, but you think it's okay to, to partake in yoga, and, and it, then we're deceived. That's just, there's, there's no way around that. That's what that really is, if you understand where yoga really comes from. You know, it's no different than like, um, uh, just another visual here. If, you're, if you have a group of people, and they're carving out on the ground, let's say a big pentagram with a, a, a circle in it, right? And they're all carving different pieces. And you just think that there's nothing wrong with going around carving it too, and you're getting good exercise while doing it. Why not carve it with them? Oh, well, but yeah, it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't believe in the, I don't believe in the, symbol, uh, in the symbol of the Satan stuff, but this is real good exercise. And I just love the way that the working the, the ground makes my arms feel. Just feels so good. But what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing a satanic pentagram, but that's not the point. I like my arms. They feel good. Is, is that worth it? Do you see what it really is? It doesn't make any sense to do it if you understand where it's really coming from. And that the devil's a liar and really deceiving us. You know, out of all the ways that there is to exercise, out of all the ways there are, we have to use the exact ways of worshiping demons because it makes us feel good? 
Really? Isn't that spiritual fornication? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 2 Corinthians 6, 16 through 17, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and, I, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Yoga, I'm here to say in love to all of you and in truth, and because of the love of God and obedience to God, that yoga is an unclean thing, and it's an unfruitful work of darkness. If I was, if I you know, thought that it would be okay to say, yeah, you know, it's okay, just, just, say that the, just say that you love Jesus and just do the Bible verses while doing it. It's not a big deal. You know, I would say that, but I would be directly disobeying God, directly. Sometimes saying the things that people don't want to hear is exactly what we need to say. Ephesians 5.11 says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them. Expose them. Not only do we not take part, but we have to speak out and say, hey, don't go that way. Isn't that the loving thing to do? Which I share with all of you in love, not in, in, in any other thing, because I care. And that's why I share with others too. Look, if somebody's going backward, you know, behind, and they don't see a cliff coming, and they keep on going, they're just happy. They love going backwards. They're having a good time going backward. And there's a cliff right behind them. They don't see it coming. And we just sit there and don't say a word. That's not a very loving thing to do. They may not like that you're disturbing their fun backward walking time. <laughs> they may not like it. But they don't see what they're doing. They don't know. But we got to tell them. We've got to share the truth. Once we know, hey, no, don't go that way. Danger, danger, danger. You know? We've got to be really careful before we, we just write something off as it's no big deal. You know, 2 Corinthians 6.14 says not to be yoked with unbelievers. It says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That doesn't mean that we don't share and shine our light and be loving towards them and, and talk to them and everything. But it, it's talking about, you know, partaking in the ways of the world. And ta partaking with the practices and things of, of the world, you know, how much more should we not be yoked to the practices of pagans, the practices of those that are in the dark? They don't know, and we just think it's no big deal. It, it's, 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 it's insanity if we really understand what we're doing. And so, um, you, you know, we know that the devil's a liar. So if we really know that, there's, there's something much deeper going on than meets the eye. Much deeper. I mean, the devil's job just doesn't just stop. He's constantly going for, for a season. For a season, it's going for that, and it's for the purposes of, of yoking people. Yoking, I use that word intentionally. Yoking people into bondage. Uh, there's a quote here also out of the, the, the document that I think will be very revealing. Very, very revealing. Um, it's, it's a starting quote from the book, Occult Invasion by Dave Hunt. And it gives insight into something deeper also to understand what's going on. It says, quote, India's Vishwa Hindu Parishad, the world's largest missionary organization, Hindu missionary, right? Organization launched an ambitious, ambitious missionary effort in 1975, Allahabad, India at the Second World Congress on Hinduism, attended from about 60,000 delegates from around the world, one of the speakers announced, quote, our mission in the West has been crowned with fantastic success. Hinduism is becoming the dominant world religion and the end of Christianity has come near, end of quote. In the constitution of the Vishwa Hindu Parishad, Regarding its primary goals, it states, quote, to establish an order of missionaries, and it goes on, in all parts of the world. Okay? And, and speaking about the Hindu Vishwa Parishad, to go further, I'm quoting a documentary called Gods of the New Age. 
the, it says the Hindu Vishwa Parishad in its magazine very clearly states that yoga teachers are the front missionaries. Yoga teachers are the front missionaries in their own magazine of the Hindu Vishwa Parishad. An editorial from Hinduism Today titled An Open Letter to Evangelicals, quote unquote, was reported on in 1991. The Hinduism Today editor, a Hindu monk, states, quote, there is a growing missionary spirit in Hinduism. It goes on, a small army of yoga missionaries is ready to go to the West. End of quote. That's from uh, Christianity Today that is quoting that. Can't be more clear what's, what's going on, right? It speaks for itself. I don't need to even add anything. It's just right there. It's right there. So there's something else going on. It's not just good and fine for, for health, which is the way that you know, it's promoted. There's really something else going on. And so just some scriptures that came to mind to, to really share along these lines. Romans 12, 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may approve what is good and acceptable and perfect the will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 20 through 22, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink of the, cu the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? We cannot choose to do practices that are yoking with demons and claim to be yoked with Jesus Christ. Can't do them both. They don't go. In the words of, he says himself, in the words of Yeshua, in the words of Jesus, he says himself, Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 through 30, take my yoke, my yoke upon you. My yoke upon you. If yoga means yoke, right? What are you yoking? He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isn't that interesting that he uses the same word? He wants us to yoke with him, which means yoga yoking is not going to work. <laughs> it's not the same as, as yoking with him. You know, if you, it's like it really is. This yoga is a, is a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, and no matter how much we want to try to change the fact that the, the you know the sheep, if it seems like if it seems like a a sheep to you, and it really just seems like a sheep, just t looking at it, this is what I hope this does today: just taking off the costume and seeing that it's really a wolf. The, nothing can change the fact. You can try to put Christianese on it. You can try to put you can try to put some oh put put a uh, Bible verses to this, put, uh, you know, scripture to this, but is it changing the fact that you're covering up a wolf? Can't do it. You just can't do it. You can, but you'll be deceived. Right? So, let's, let's look at that. This is, a, this is infuriating to God. He does not want us to, to be part of this in any way, shape, or form. And if we just lift the mask, it's easy to see. And we know that he says... We, he doesn't want us to have any appearance of evil. If we know, now that we know, okay, this is, this is not what it's saying. And, and please, I encourage all of you, you know, do more research on this. If you have uh, questions and you want to know more about this, there's many resources, there's things that you can look into this and pray into this. And if you see the, the truth, which I'm sharing that it really is evil, it's nothing good at all, 
then the Lord says, do not have any appearance of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Nothing to even do with that. Nothing to do, we know that's bad. Okay, I'm not even gonna try that, Lord. You don't want me to go down that route? I'll do something else. I'll, I'll, if it's just for exercise, I'll do something else. And if you think that you're somehow, which I've heard many people say, somehow getting closer to God, the one true God of the Bible by, by doing this because they say they're doing the Bible verses and they're doing the worship. That's what Christian yoga is. It's a new movement. Yeah, it's, it's real. This is what they're doing. Christian yoga, it's an oxymoron. You, it's like having a Christ, uh, Christian Satanism. You know, you can't do it. It doesn't work. What excuses are we making? What are we doing? We gotta look at this and see these people are deceived and, and we don't want them to be. We don't wanna be deceived. We don't want others to be deceived. So we have to share where this is really coming from. It's taking storm everywhere. You look everywhere. What, the marketing campaign is insane. Do you see it? It's like bigger than Starbucks now. Yoga on every corner. Yoga here, yoga there. This kind, this kind. If it doesn't get you from this side, you get this side. Oh, you don't like the health. Uh, if it's not just for the health benefits, your spiritual life will be better if you do it. If you do it, it's always good. Always, always, always good. Everywhere you look, it's being built up. This is what the world is exalting, which is a huge clue. It's a huge clue for, for why would it be exalted so much. And so let us not be deceived. Let us stand in truth. We who are truly understanding, we who are of the faith, we who, who that can see, we have eyes to see because the true living God, the Holy Spirit lives within us that we can discern the things and we can be able to press in in matters and say, okay, Lord, we have a personal God that will tell us which way to go, which way, right or wrong. He will help us through the landmines and guide our way through. Hallelujah for that. Who can say that? Only those that are the children of God can say that. The whole world lies in the deception of Satan, whether it be yoga or whether it be this or whether it be that the whole world lies in the deceptions of Satan and we hallelujah we can see through that because we have the living God who loves us who's there for us to show us these things he doesn't want us to be partaking in the world and he will lead and guide our ways every single day in new and new ways the more that we seek him every single day and he will lead us out of these things and, he, and, and when you share this truth with others, he, when you pray for them, things happen in the spirit realm. It is so powerful. We know that, right? I'm stating the obvious here. Things change. Prayer changes things. My favorite bumper sticker. I love that. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> Prayer changes things. And so when we're praying for these people that are deceived, it really, really makes a, a, a huge difference. I'll share a little bit more um, with you know, the, the question and answer about that, just about different people and, and what they're going through and them coming to the Lord and seeing this and how prayer has, has changed things. So let's not stop praying. Let's not stop seeking the truth. If there's any doubt in your minds today about what yoga really is, if there's any doubt, if you think, well, you know, this lady's a little extreme and out there, you know, it can't be that bad. If, if that's a thought in, in your mind today, I, once again, I, I urge you in all sincerity and love that you seek in your private time, you seek the Lord on this and ask him what his will is because even if your will is to do it, that's, it really doesn't, what you think doesn't matter, what I think doesn't matter. It's only the will of God that counts. That's it. It's not about what I think, little Indian lady, okay, or, or what you think, our opinions don't matter. It's only about what God wants us to do that counts. And so if we put him at the, fir at the first and foremost place in our heart and mind, which he's called us to do, right, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, it's not just sometimes a little bit when we like it. It means giving our everything up, even our bodies are, are, is a holy living sacrifice to the living God, everything everything up for him and he will bless that abundantly and he does and I've seen it over and over and over again when people have turned from this and they have come to the knowledge of the living God the way that he works in their lives and and blesses them I've seen it over and over again and it's such a blessing to see I know that he does it and he he wants that he wants our obedience that's our reasonable service right so let's really look at what this is and and just share it you know with others and I, I, I'm, just, I'm just grateful to be able to share it with you. I know that the Lord did not have me do this, had go through all of this to just, as I shared with um, 
sister earlier, to just put it under a table and to just, you know, hide my, my light under a table. This is a reason that I'm sharing this, that, it, that, 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 that I've been through this. I know what this is all about. I'm here to say, from the rooftop, you know, I'm here to say, danger, danger, everybody, please hear. And whoever can hear, whoever has ears to hear, you know, I pray that you can hear what, what God really wants. You know, what, what, he, what he's saying and what, he, what is really going on with the deceptions of our time. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. <laughs>